here. First of all, thank you very much for everyone for joining in today's uh, Lunch and Learn series on the kitchen. My name is Chris Bava. If we haven't met before, I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Lifestyles by Barron's. So thank you very much for everyone taking the time to, uh, to watch this seminar with us, Lunch and Learn Based on the Kitchen. Uh, of course, the elephant in the room here is, is COVID that we're all aware of. And we want to first off say, hopefully everyone is staying safe, staying well, uh, spending time with their, their families there. And um, hopefully everyone's doing well, especially at a time like this. Yeah. Uh, for Lifestyles by Barons, it's been interesting for us. Uh, we are still doing uh, consultations where builds are still in production here because uh, construction is still considered an essential service. To, there's some stipulations with that, but we're still going ahead with those. Uh, just to let everyone know, just again, because of Corona, a few businesses have shut down and the decor center is in its very final legs of finishings. So there was uh, just a few elements that are yet to be finished, which we're very excited to get that uh, done in that case. So as many of you are aware, and for those that are new, we have the tour of home programs, which we're used to offering year after year, where we have a group of individuals come to a recent home that we've completed to tour the home, see the best in finishing and design, talk to past clientele. Unfortunately, with, with Corona, that's not the case. We can't do that. So we figured we'd give a track, uh, we'd give it a, a shot at doing it virtually with these lunch and learns. So this is our first crack at this. So bear with us. We do appreciate your patience here. We're really ultimately trying to offer uh, our clientele and prospective clients uh, really uh, a lot of value here. That's our ultimate goal. So with that being said, uh, with Zoom here, for those that are familiar, great. For those that are not, um, I'm going to be sharing a screen and we're going to be spotlighting a video as Gord's going to take you through the lunch and learn. We invite all questions. There is a button at the bottom of your screen that says chat. If you were to type in, to, to feel free to any time to type in your questions in the chat function. And if the question warrants that I uh, pause Gord in his, in his meeting to ask that question, I will. If not, we'll have an, at the end an open Q&A session at that point. I'll uh, read out to all the questions to Gord so he can answer them. And it'll be uh, very free and open for people that have any more questions at that time. We plan for this webinar to go until about 1 p.m. And I'd like just everyone to know that they, if you haven't received the email already, that there are three more webinars planned at the same time every Wednesday going forward this month. One on organization solutions, another one on pantries and serveries, and then of course the final one there on bath, powder, uh, powder rooms, and the spa bath experience. So uh, feel free to look out for those, share those with friends and family so that they can ultimately gain some value from these lunch and learns. Uh, at the end of this webinar, we'll be talking about a fifth webinar that we'll be launching in June. And ultimately, it's a cost-effective solution that Lifestyles by Barons will be offering. It's a new business um, stream that we have for those that are looking to remodel their homes at a very cost-effective price point, ultimately with the goal of meeting all of our clientele's needs, especially given the, uh, the COVID times here. So at this point here, I'm just going to let everyone know that just to reduce any interference, I will be muting individuals. So feel free to, if, you, if you'd like to ask a question, type it in the chat function, and I'll be continuing to monitor that all throughout the presentation. And of course, if you have any issues at any time, feel free to type into the chat as well. So at this point here, I'd like to formally hand it off to Rick Anasio, VP of Sales, and I'm just gonna put on the agenda uh, for him to go through with you guys. Hey everybody, I'm uh, Rick. And uh, as Chris said, thank you very much uh, to everybody who's on right now for joining us um, on this uh, brand new adventure for us. Um, we're really excited to be here and thank you everybody for giving us the uh, opportunity to actually comb our hair this morning. <laughs> so the social <laughs> isolation has been, uh, has been uh, a little bit tedious for everybody. So we're just, uh, we're, we're grateful to be here and that everybody's safe. Um, so as you know, today we're going to be talking about uh, kitchens and designing kitchens. And obviously, just like any other kitchen uh, or any other uh, uh, company, we have certain principles that we follow when we're doing our designs for our kitchens. Now, keep in mind, these are principles. They're not regulations, uh, more like guidelines that we follow. But every single project that we do is unique and every client has different requirements for their spaces. So we have these in the background and they're modified as we need. Okay, so these nine are, are principles that we typically follow and uh, they're not in any particular order, but the first one is extremely important. So the functionality of the kitchen and your needs are extremely important to us because making it pretty and not functional 
is not something that you want to spend money on doing to your kitchen. So if you're going to spend money to renovate your kitchen, you definitely want the functionality aspect to be there. Um, the scale and the proportion of the kitchen and space and focal points is another thing that we look at, uh, whether it's one focal point or, or a couple of focal points. And obviously, most people have heard of the work triangle in a kitchen. Okay, so that's something that we always follow. Now, once again, that's also modified depending on what the requirements are for the space and how many walls, how many windows, the size of the uh, island and the shape. But that is something that's always present. Um, open shelving. So open shelving is something that in the last few years has become very, very popular. We in Lifestyles by Barons use open shelving in moderation. Um, actually, Gordon introduced the Pomona. If you look at Pomona, um, Pomona has open shelving in their kitchen design, but if you'll see, it's more of a display space. So Gordon is going to show you this kitchen. You're actually going to be standing in our brand new showroom and um, you're one of the first people to actually see our new kitchen uh, display here and you're gonna see that there's actually no open shelving in this display, but that there's a moderation that's been done to actually display anything that we wanted to in that space. Um, appliance consistency and design to maximize usable space. Gord will go through the, the different appliances and how we've used them um, in this space to maximize it. Um, don't forget the trash. So everybody needs their, their uh, trash um, uh, um, containers in their kitchen. Obviously, we try to hide those um, as much as we can instead of just having it on uh, on the floor, um, in a container on the floor. And um, the next thing is lighting. Lighting is extremely important in a kitchen setting, so um, we'll be going through the different types of lights and how they've been used in here. Um, obviously, we've uh, anybody that's done a consult with us before or who's been to our tour homes, one of the things that we always say is having a plan. So planning ahead your space and having some kind of a design is extremely important because what that does is it puts the construction company or the design company on the same page as the client and everybody's on the same page instead of having different ideas of what's actually going to be built. And then lastly, the flow between um, the different rooms. So um, hopefully if you've been on any of our tours or if you've seen any, any of our designs, one of the things that we get is that there's a beautiful flow from one end of the house to the other. That's important for the house, but it's also important from space to haste. So space, sorry. So um, the way that the kitchen flows or the space of the kitchen flows into other spaces is extremely important too. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Gord and uh, he'll, uh, he'll take it from here. Thank you, Rick. Okay, so folks, in regards to our decor center, before we show you the starting point, um, our decor center is over 20 years old. Now, many of our clients' homes, quite frankly, uh, homes, kitchens we did 25 years ago are still relevant, but being a decor center, I'll be frank, the benchmark is a little higher as far as staying relevant. So please don't get the impression you have to redo your, your kitchen every three times. Our decor center is 20 years old. We've done it three times, but it's because we are a decor center at the end of the day. So, but what I wanna share with you right now is our starting point. And our starting point was a typical builder's kitchen and you'll see it was pretty rough. But those rough elements are important for you to understand because that's typical of a lot of builder's homes. And then we're gonna do the reveal in just a moment. And we're quite proud of this. We, uh, we're so proud of the design we've done here. Um, we may submit this into the Build Society as well. So Chris, could you start with the original way back when over 20 years ago when we originally purchased? So as you can see, very typical. Now we had no intentions of modifying this. Our intent was to gut it. And you'll see we clearly did gut it. But you'll see a lot of the very common problems you see with any builder grade solution. So you'll see a lot of use of bulkheads running across the top. Now, the bulkheads from a builder perspective are simply to reduce costs. Cabinetry is infinitely more expensive than drywall, but it tends to define space and lose space. There's all sorts of challenges with that typical builder kitchen we had. So you'll see the stick out fridge. Stick out fridge, you're losing tremendous floor space. It forces the island to be almost non-usable. You see the typical range configuration that was here. Typical range configuration, waste a tremendous amount of space. You see the grid configuration on the floor. In simple terms, there was nothing working for this kitchen. And that's a main part of our business. So as you can see, we really wanted to step it up. Now, as I said, this is our third kitchen. So you were one of the first clients to see it, but it's a significant change from the starting point over 20 years ago. So at this point, let's do the big reveal. I'm gonna to walk towards the kitchen and uh, Rick's gonna uh, show you what it sits like currently. 
All right, I'm just gonna transfer over phones here. So just everyone bear with me a second. Okay, you should be on there, Rick. You just can, Rick's just currently connecting to the audio. Okay, Chris. Perfect, we can hear you. Okay. So I just switched over? Yes, it's just on, it's focusing, if you just turn the camera around there, it's just focusing on you and it's sideways. Okay, I apologize, guys. I'm sure you want to see the kitchen more than my close-up face here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There okay. we go. Second All right. Hold so, on a second. Uh, this is, there we go. So as you can see, the great reveal. We're really excited about this kitchen. Over the last 27 years, we're constantly taking it up the benchmark. Take it up, take it up. Please don't be intimidated by anything you see here, because obviously we scale to budget at the end of the day, but we wanted to show something exceptionally creative. In this case, we've actually made the kitchen larger than the second kitchen and larger than the first kitchen. So we are slightly larger, but you can see it's a wow. And it can't just be a wow, it's gotta be about functionality. It's gotta be how it functions. One of the challenges here is we wanted to do something fairly unique. We wanted to actually build a dining room concept, which could be used for day-to-day -day entertaining or day-to-day -day eating, but this could also function as a dining room table. So we wanted to do something very creative. So, what we've done here is you'll see this is a custom table, which we actually made. Very interesting angle configuration. It's a herringbone design. It will be timeless. It's beautiful. It's got beautiful, uh, large steel legs on it. And then we carried the same detail into the hood. So good design will replicate. If we can back up the camera a little here, this won't be everybody's taste. You'll either love it or you'll hate it. But I'd rather get a love or a hate than a hmm, it's just there. We're trying to show something very creative. So it's more of a, almost an art uh, piece, but also has a functional element. If you take a look at the ceiling, we've stepped the ceiling up. We're trying to give the illusion of greater height. We've completely hidden a complete uh, sound system directly into this, and there's a complete lighting package, which we'd have to do in person to be able to appreciate it. But it really has some design and wow. This table here literally extends to 16. So from a design perspective, it's so important when you're thinking through how is that space gonna function? It sits eight very comfortably. This sectional, if you look in the space here, is designed to flow. The sectional, which is all custom, will shift back get to the wall, which means one of those rare events where you've got a large number of people, we can literally extend up to here. So it can balloon up to 16. So we're trying to show how space can be used for multiple purposes. You also notice from a design perspective, while we're standing here, the kitchen is orientated in such a way that it joins to the great room. We're having a whole other session on great rooms and future walls, so we won't go into any detail on that, but you have to think of how that space is gonna function. So as you can see, we've given the bank that sort of concept, exceptionally comfortable, exceptionally durable, uh, leather, easy wipe off, clean, easy to maintain. And in any home life, it's got about usability and how easy is it to maintain. Speaking about easy to maintain, waterfall detail. So we've taken natural stone, we've waterfalled it to the floor, timeless and beautiful. Now don't look too closely. We were literally three weeks away from finishing the decor center on the three levels in totality and due to COVID got shut down. So nothing is polished at this point. So it will look even better uh, once we get back into production. So as you can see, this is a common element in good kitchen design. Try and anchor the kitchen. So this is literally the utility wall. And we're, as you notice, we're using the full cubic capacity. If you take a closer look here, typically this would just be a blank panel, useless, no functionality. At Lifestyles, it's all about how do we use space more efficiently and make every single inch count. So a simple element like this where you push the panel and it reveals a hidden pantry. Push the other panel, it reveals a hidden pantry. The advantage of this configuration is instead of digging through 24, 30 inches of space, everything is easily accessible, everything has a specific purpose, and then is instantly hidden. Obviously, we have no hardware, we're trying to hide this, this is considered push to open, completely hidden. So as you walk further into this design here, 
uh, we have many of the things that many of us have seen. So for example, you'll notice there are no quarter shelves. Everything is staged here, full pull-out uh, configuration. Um, you'll take a look here, waste management makes tremendous sense. So your compost bins, some clients tend to use that for dog food or cat food um, or for recycling purposes. So it's a great way to do the, the uh, waste management. If we go a little further here and take a look, actually Rick, I might get you to swim over here. Typically any builder would put just one man on panel. You're losing a lot of detail, you're losing wow. This is designed to a furniture level, so we're trying to actually make it look and feel more like furniture. With this quality of a fridge configuration, you notice the fridge isn't jutting out. So it allows for what is called in the industry zero clearance. And the capacity is absolutely staggering. Energy efficiency of these quality of, uh, appliances are far, far better than some of your, your building grade type of appliance solutions. We're considering running a complete lunch and learn just on appliance configurations and which models and why. So if there's interest in that, please let us know. Wine. We certainly do a tremendous amount of wine in our kitchen design, often <laughs> they're literally only down to counter height, okay? In this application, once again, the core center, this is really for the connoisseur. I'll be quite frank, there's 75 bottles here. So it's really for those that are a connoisseur, but in many of our, probably 95% of our kitchen designs are much smaller applications. This makes a tremendous amount of sense. This is the freezer. You know how we've all got that chest freezer and we've got layers of food on the top and the stuff down at the bottom we haven't touched in a few years and typically we throw out. Advantage of this configuration is it truly allows for accessibility. Okay, so you have one clear glance, you can see everything in here. We do many different types of this configuration. Um, in the decor center, we elected to do standalone solutions. Quite often we do a French door configuration, which means two small doors and a freezer on the bottom. But the concepts are sound regardless of the size of the kitchen. This configuration makes tremendous sense. We've been doing this for years. Builders don't do it because frankly it involves a lot more labor and a lot more planning and a lot more design work, but it is tremendously more flexible. The advantage here is you're using the full cubic capacity and we actually have three pieces of appliances here. When you move to an open concept here, the challenge here is how you hide the mess. So for example, when you do all your food preparation, your food preparation can kept steam and warm in a warming drawer, which makes tremendous sense. So you can literally do all your food preparation, put it in, and then keep it all warm, do your complete cleanup, and it's completely hidden from your guests. But you'll notice we're using all of the cubic capacity, even the bottom here. And as you go a little further up, as you can see, we've staged all of this, but it's showing capacity, capacity, capacity. So we're using the full cubic capacity. Other thing, which is just a practical element, aging demographics, and the, the one I'm the most proud of um, is my own mom. She's 91, she's still in her own home. We are scheduled to redo her home. We will be putting this configuration in, and it just makes a tremendous amount of sense. It's simply easier to get things in and out safely. Um, and the other advantage of this configuration is with this configuration as well, it does allow for the two ovens. Statistically, you'll use this five to 10% of the time, but it's still a must for that turkey, that Christmas, that Easter, those large get togethers, but it obviously uses more energy than a smaller oven. So we would recommend, and statistically, 85 to 95% of food production is done in the smaller ovens. The advantage of this configuration too, is it allows for a steam oven. And the steam oven actually is incredibly more efficient from a standpoint of health. Um, so there are, there are definitely options here. And as you can see, it can operate as a full convection oven and or it can operate as a steam. If you eat in any restaurant at the end of the day, or we can have it as a microwave. In many of our applications, this is a microwave and convection oven. We're awfully doing that. The advantage of this configuration is if you go to a restaurant, they never reheating in microwaves. When you do it in the steam ovens, we've certainly tried all this technology. We go through all the extensive training on it. The reheat capability is second to none. It's, it's in a league of its own. All right, so let's go further back to design and good design practices. So you'll notice here, we, we're, we're stepping. So we've got cabinets. Rick, if I can ask you just to pull the camera back. So what we've designed here, you won't see this in, in most uh, kitchens but it adds a heck of a lot of interest. So you'll notice here, we've actually stepped this cabinet back. 
normally everything would be uniform gaps. We've also dropped the cabinet down. So these are display cabinets. Now you'd be shocked how much they actually hold. Those items that you don't use all the time, we've got huge, we do a lot of catering events out of here for social events. They're at the back. And frankly, you can't see them, but the storage capability is excellent. And since we're only using them once or twice a year, that's the simple ladder you pull them down. But every household has that ability and it's all pushed to open. So once again, we don't want it looking like it's functional, but it is truly functional. So at the end of the day, you wouldn't really realize that it's there for storage purposes, but it also has a display capability, which just adds a, a glamour, it adds a wow factor. And it's really important here, you'll notice that when you've done the glass configuration, the glass configuration simply stops the dust, okay? So if we go a little further here, this is, this is a very interesting design and we're really glad we incorporated this. The day of the dining room hutch buffet are gone. Uh, we're simply not seeing that in design, but everybody has a requirement for the fine china, those things that aren't used every day. And it's really nice when you can incorporate them and actually show them from a display uh, standpoint. Now I'll be frank, I want to show capacity here. We are set up literally for a setting of 60 people. So literally, this is called the buffet set, where we used to do some very large events here, but it just shows you the capacity of what this can physically hold it's actually very significant, but it does also add a wow value uh, to the actual design. Also, another thing that's exciting about this is by stepping this back, we've now created an entry, which is a whole other lunch and learn, which we're really excited about, which leads to a pantry and a serving concept. By stepping it back, which you notice we've also stepped back on this side, it's created an entry. It's more interesting, more architecturally pleasing. It's more of a wow factor. So let's take a look at some of the, the basic elements here. A lot of cabinets have a problem where you can't pull the, the huge plates in them because they're simply not deep enough. So every one that we produce, we actually custom extend the cabinets. These are full size, oversized plates. And you'll notice we just increased the number of uh, storage capability in all of them. So there's significantly more storage as you work your way around. Let's flip back to the island here. So if I can get you to back up, stand over here, Rick. So as you can see, waste management we had ended off on. Many designs, this would be simply a dummy panel and a dummy panel. And in our designs, we don't want to be losing space, okay? So if I switch over to the other side here, once again, hidden storage. And you'd be shocked, we staged everything here. We're just once again trying to show capacity, capacity, capacity. So let's say you wanted tea, but you didn't want to pull out a kettle and you didn't want the effort of actually going to the effort of doing it. Oh, there's the teapot. And by the way, there's boiling water on the spot. It's filtered boiling water. So if you wanted to have a cup of tea or a pot of tea, and being in office, we use this almost every single day. And there's no limit to how much you can actually pull, and trust me, it's boiling, okay? So it's just the ease of being able to do it. And if you want it to be boiling or if you want it to be cold, cold is on this side. And once again, fully filtered. All right, so design is not just about the wow, it's also about the practicality. So here's a few other thoughts. So we've talked about this hidden storage here. One thing we don't particularly like is when you, by cold, we're forced to have power on the islands, which typically means plugs everywhere. So this is something new we've introduced, which we're pretty excited about. And it just pops open. It does meet all the Canadian and code safety requirements. Uh, you can literally recharge your iPhone and or appliances, laptops. We find that kitchens typically are used for multiple functions. It is indeed the heart of the home. So we do put a lot of thought into application, application, application. A few other things. So as you work your way around here and you're looking at this area here, we've done a still granite installation which is ground up granite, incredibly durable. I cannot even begin to tell you how much this is used by the staff here. And yet it still looks absolutely brand new. And the abuse it went through even with the painters and things of that nature, incredibly durable, doesn't stain. Interesting configuration. We're doing a lot of these. It does allow for you to literally wash your dishes, dry them, very large sink. Some of our applications, we're gonna be doing one in the kitchen decor center in the basement. We're doing another kitchen display which will have a uh, drying board built right into the countertop. So it, it's just showing application. Another simple thing, kitchens that are very prone to mess and dirt. So here's an example. 
So you guys have a mask, you just got them. This is connecting into the central vac. It's considered more of a commercial grade as far as quality. This could literally, it extends much further, but it has instant cleaning capability. And it is more of a commercial quality from the standpoint of the ability to have And to put it away, literally that simple. All right. Now, once again, that comes down to good design. We obviously had everything roughed in to support that in the application. And every home has a pet, all right? So here's another example. This is designed to look like the pet place, all right? And as you can see, the storage capability is absolutely huge, all right? So if we keep working our way around, um, this is new on the industry. And once again, we're gonna be potentially uh, doing a complete appliance uh, one that we're excited about, but this is uh, Sub-Zero and their Cove. It is an exceptional dishwasher. Um, we have different ways of configuring this. We'll likely do a completely separate session on this based on interest that we received, um, but we do do a lot of research. Any good design build company will research, research before recommending a products. Uh, this is one that we're very excited about. From a design perspective, we titled this many ways in different ways. So and sometimes we do a panel with a second panel, this is a more traditional configuration. Often we would try and make it disappear in totality. So let's talk about some organization. Organization solution. So this is something simple. We've custom done this. This is literally a setting for 16. Okay, now most people aren't gonna be doing a setting for 16, but it shows you with capacity, good planning, this will last a lifetime. It's not a temporary solution in any, any way, shape or form. All right, so let's take another look. So here's a simple example. Upper cabinet, just some creativity. You notice the custom shelf detail we've done here? Custom shelf detail, which means there's an awful lot of crystalware, things that we use for staging, but the household uh, would have these elements, but with good design, we've got a spot for it. It almost acts as a display area, which you don't necessarily want to show all the time here. So let's take another look here. So if we take a look at this area here, this hood, I'm exceptionally proud of. Okay, we've custom designed this. If you really zero in the feel, the touch, it's timeless. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's a herringbone design. It will last a lifetime. It's a piece of art, and we're really trying to give that warmth, that earthy, without being stuffy. This will be timeless. This will last a lifetime as far as touch and feel. Let's talk about a few other things here. So here's a, just a practical storage capability. So as you can see, full pull-out, full adjustability, um, designed to be overfilled. It can take an awful lot of abuse, all right? Show you something else that's new on the market. So um, we've seen this for many years, okay? Ease of cleaning is, is exceptional. And once again, I won't go into a lot of details on this because frankly, we may be running a, a separate session, but the cleaning up is, is exceptionally easy. This we're quite excited about. It's actually put all the controls built into the custom cabinetry. Now the cabinetry isn't entirely finished, so we've got some alignment issues here, but you can see where we're, we, where we're going to at this point in time. And literally as you turn it on, you can literally, a little light goes on warning you that it's on and in operation. Um, a really nice touch, okay? So um, as I said, we're really quite excited. It overflows, it gives you that really custom look, um, and it's custom millwork directly into the cabinetry. So it's, it's a timeless solution. Here's another organization solution tied to the kitchen. So for example, everybody has requirement for knives, okay? This is a way of storing the knives safely. Uh, a lot of uh, application here, everything's got a spot. It easily comes out, easily keeps organized. Uh, and then we've got all sorts of serving applications down there. So once again, it's just trying to show everything from a standpoint of efficiency and why. So let's take a look at some lighting issues here. So from a lighting perspective, and I'll get you to pull back here. Sorry, Rick. That's just okay. Here's a showing you capacity. The, the manufacturer that actually produces this is for us. These are all engineered. These are tongue and groove. Very few clients are going to have that degree of weight going into a cabinet, but we've overloaded it by design because we're trying to show the durability, the engineering, and also the capacity of what this is actually designed to hold, right? So it, it truly is designed to hold an awful lot. All right, so let's take a look at a bit more. Actually, one thing I forgot to show you, and it's just a, a, a simple one here, 
hidden storage, once again, we all have those little nasty things that we don't really want to be showing people. So those odd cleaning supplies, that's all telescopic tilt-outs. It's once again, just trying to use every inch. We've got a custom uh, tray in the bottom so you can be not so careful in what you're actually placing in the bottom. As you can see, we just toss things in the bottom there and we don't have to worry from a durability standpoint. All right, so let's take a further look here. This is once again, this is just showing uh, hot door capacity and physically the door it hold. All right, so it, it, it holds a tremendous amount. All right, so from a kitchen design, here's another thing that's kind of useful from a kitchen design standpoint. Uh, there are some code issues here. We have to be very careful on how we install these because it is on an exterior wall, so we have to be careful about the line freezing, but we've done certain provisions. But instead of carrying that big pot drawer, or sorry, the pot over here with a, a water, you literally would fill it at source. So it's easy and it is functional. All right, so as far as the actual surfaces here in the stone, um, this is a classic lifestyle. We've learned this over the years here. Quite often what happens here is you put a beautiful surface here, and then many builders, because it's easy, it's quick, it's fast, they'll put a tile or a man-made product up on the back. We've learned from a design perspective and also from a practical standpoint, that's likely not the best decision point. In simple terms, grout and tomato sauce never mix well. We've also learned that by replicating the same material here and here, it makes the space look infinitely larger. It has more of a wow factor from a design perspective, but its cleanliness is second to none. Now, once again, we haven't sealed this at this point, so you'll, you'll see some blemishes on the material, but from a maintenance perspective, there simply is nothing simpler in the industry. It's simply wipe and go, all right? Another thing you'll notice here, we're pretty proud of what we've done here. We've actually done what is called book matching, all right? So when we're actually cutting the stone, we've actually, from the mountain, we've literally taken the piece right beside that connects to it. So you'll see that the grains connect perfectly. And it really transitions a backsplash to art. And in my humble opinion, Mother Nature does a much nicer job than a lot of the man-made solutions, but we do offer both. So to recap, as far as kitchen design, um, let's look at some of the, the, the wow factors. We've incorporated a beautiful uh, table configuration. This table configuration can be sized down to literally four people, or it could be literally eight people, or it could be 16 people. So we've really put some thought from a design perspective. The kitchen by design flows into the great room which means we're maximizing space, which makes a lot of sense. We've created a solarium. Now, I wish you could see this when it was done. This is a very small example of a solarium. This is all featuring some of our, our, our custom furniture packages, but we're gonna be introducing palm trees and plant material that will really warm it. There is other uh, staging elements that are gonna be going in. We've done a custom island here. The custom island has the waterfall detail, highly functional. This island is literally 400% bigger than the original island that was here. We have our feature wall. Now our feature wall is incredibly functional, incredibly durable, and will last the test of time. Um, one thing I'd like to backtrack on is lighting too, because lighting is exceptionally important. Do not let any firm wire everything together. Too many firms will wire the up lighting, the down lighting together, the while all the in cabinet lighting together. If you can't control lighting, you won't have the wow, and you will also be energy efficiency. One thing we're proud of is a lot of our switches are completely hidden. So for example, if you look closely here, and I just touch this panel, it's turning on the glass lighting. Now I wish you could see this at night, because at night it's absolutely astounding. But to just try and show you the comparison here, I've just turned off the in-cabinet lighting. So the in-cabinet lighting is off, We've actually done glass lighting. Now the glass lighting is the light is actually at the back of the shelves. We've actually sand glass in the front of the shelves so you don't see that dot, dot, dot. The look is spectacular. And you don't have to worry about your carbon footprint because it's absolutely using second to none as far as energy. It's using absolutely no energy. Another thing that we'll say for another day here is the entire decor center can be controlled. It's completely automated. So for example, if we want to turn off any aspect or turn on any aspect, be it the sound, the security, the cameras, uh, the lighting, anything in here literally can be controlled by your iPad. So if Rick or, or, or Chris or I are up working in the loft, literally, we can literally answer the door at the decor center 
on our phones. Technology has come an awful long way. Hard for us to show that to you in a lunch and learn. We get tears to give you information, give you an idea of some of those things that we're now offering. At this point, I'm going to ask, are there any questions? Chris, do you have any questions that would come in? And then I'll do a recap. No, oh, we've just had a few comments uh, talking about a few design elements there. And people are liking stuff as the vacuum there and uh, those amazing storage solutions. But at this point, no specific questions in the uh, chat function. Since there was comments about the vacuum, I'm going to show you something else about the vacuum since we did, somebody had mentioned vacuum. So let's bring the camera over here. This we're exceptionally proud of. This is relatively new in the industry and why we wanted to show it. Um, everybody has cleaning requirements, okay? So from a cleaning perspective, literally it's this simple. You simply pull the hose out. And by the way, I'm not gonna pull out 40 feet. But literally, there's 40 feet in here. Uh, it's designed and engineered so it can do the entire main level, okay? And literally, it's a big version of what we just showed you. Now, we can attach this to beater bars, the floor attachments for doing the upholstery. You can attach it to anything. We've actually designed it because we're thinking of outdoor living. Now, outdoor living, separate topic. Uh, we're doing a three-story addition on the decor center, which we're really excited about. There'll be a whole other launch on that. But... How this works is really incredibly simple. One of the challenges in the industry with central vac cleaning is typically the problem is what do you do with all the hoses? So we've got clients now buying three sets of hoses, one for each level, and they're filling their closets with these things. And it's been a pet peeve because they're pulling it out of the closet, hauling it out, doing their cleaning, and then they have to coil it all together again. This is this simple. So you literally, that's on. Once again, commercial. So it really has a lot of suction. When you're finished from a standpoint, you don't need the hose anymore. It's this simple. And that's it, folks. So it shows you where technology has gone. It's that powerful. I'll show you something else just while we're here. So we mentioned that it's on iPhones as far as, or Apple or iPads, whatever the case may be. But literally, to control the kitchen, I can literally turn the whole kitchen on and off. And this is all broken down to every single fixture you can control individually. Let's say we just want to set it for dining room. Well, it's automatically got a dining room setting, which by the way, we won't do it for now. We'll turn on a whole lighting and a whole sound system package. So I mean, the, the options are absolutely endless from a standpoint of, of what it will do. Uh, one thing I just touched on here, is there is a whole lighting package, which is really hard for us to, to show at this time, um, but there's a lighting package all hidden up in all these step ceilings. If you take a look in the step ceilings on the front entry of the decor center, and then the step ceiling, now this one's kind of fun. <laughs> this one is if you're watching a movie and there's this motion scene, it can literally go blue. Or if there's something very scary, it shows you where technology's gone, it will go red. And the sound systems, by the way, the way they're designed now, is they're completely hidden. So for example, this sounds absolutely beautiful and we actually have a specialized technology that is actually in the drywall. And so you're not physically seeing the speakers. Now there are some limitations as to where they can be put. We can't put them everywhere. But for those who have been in the decor center, it's been really, really a positive experience. It's been exciting. All right, folks, I hope this was all about information. It was all about sharing. From a standpoint of there's been a lot of discussion about the decor center um really to, to to give you some information sorry it sounds like there was a question yes yes uh Annalie was just asking and she said that she loves the ceiling drop design how far from the cabinets does it extend it appears to be two feet maybe we can touch a little bit more on those drop ceilings okay, and so that's, that's an excellent dimension. question it doesn't it doesn't relate to that it's not a matter about how far it is from the cabinet our design people, we were spending a lot of energy on this. It's designed more about the space, okay? So for example, if you look closely, you look at this size here and this size here, and that size, they are different sizes. Our design people tatted this all out first because from a design perspective, what we wanted to do was we wanted to make the gourmet kitchen feel much larger than it is. So there's not a rule saying it's based on this cabinet, by design perspective, we clearly wouldn't have it coming this far back. You'll see it's all custom. I'm not going to show you the pantry server because we have a custom one in there as well, but I will show you the one in the hall. 
It's designed about more the space you're looking at. I will close this door. Rick, if you can just show them that. This is an example of a stepped ceiling, okay? So we've actually, and, and most clients when they come in here, I'm, I apologize, I don't have all the lights on. It's really spectacular when the lights are on. It gives you the illusion of a much higher ceiling, okay, than we are. The reality is we've had people in here and they think we have a 10 foot ceiling. We don't. We're actually under nine feet in this uh, particular core center. But it shows you with good design how you can actually get the, the illusion of a much higher ceiling. Chris, are there other questions at this point? Otherwise, I'm going to close at this point. Are there other questions? Or? No, no other questions at this time, and we're about 15 minutes uh, to 1 o'clock. So first of all, I'm going to thank you, and then I'm going to hand this over to Rick uh, to close off. So first of all, thank you folks for the, um, the uh, joining us. This is a very different way of doing this. We're exceptionally excited about the tour of homes for the next one, which is next Wednesday, which is the pantry and uh, server. Uh, Rick, would you like to add to that? No, as far as the space, um, as we said initially, obviously we had the guidelines and we have to alter the guidelines as we go along. As you can see in this specific example, we had to combine a dining room and a kitchen together. So give it some kind of an elegance of a dining room, but also have the kitchen together. So um, what's been done here is basically seamlessly incorporating both. Um, the coved ceiling that you typically see in a dining room, we've uh, adapted it to here so that we have lighting working around the space. Um, as you can see, the countertops, they're a lot more fluid now. They're a lot more linear. And the reason is obviously also with COVID, people are going to start looking for surfaces that are easy clean um, and that you don't need a lot of maintenance on. Um, as you can see, even with the appliances, um, we're trying to keep it as clean as possible, try to keep as many appliances off the countertops. Um, and, and you'll see there, as Gord pointed out, with the big oven on the bottom and then either a microwave actually built in or a half convection and steam oven. Um, so it's all about fluidity in the kitchen space now. It's all about keeping everything clean um, and about uh, trying to incorporate all the gut lines into specific spaces. Thank you for that, Rick. Just uh, some closing comments here. To our knowledge, and we are part of the uh, Build Society, and Rick keeps pointing to the floor. We just had a question about flooring. Oh, flooring, okay. So what we've done from a design perspective, and this is something we've learned, I'd say, in the last 10 years, um, many clients have this mindset, I have to have ceramic, right? I have to have porcelain in my kitchen. And the problem with that is it really tends to define space and make space look smaller. Here's the other learnings. When it is that definite ceramic or that definite porcelain, you're guaranteed when you drop that plate that that plate is broken. So there's some practical applications as to why we've moved away from ceramics and porcelains, always in a kitchen. And there's some design applications that's why we moved away. What we've done here is this is a high end, uh, this is one of our direct manufacturer relationships, uh, floor solution we put in, it's engineered, it's extremely durable. When you scratch it, and you will scratch it, it can be easily touched up at the end of the day. But the beauty of it is it allows spaces to have multiple purposes. So remember when we talked about how this will expand to 16? That's one of the beauties of it. There's a continuous flow. It's allowing us to place furniture much closer than, and this is all custom furnishing elements, much closer than what we would normally do. So when we redesigned the decor center, we really wanted to show something different. And I'll be frank, the second kitchen had porcelain tiles. All right, and, and the industry we're constantly learning. So it was a chance for us to do things a little differently. So let's just wrap a bit. One thing I'm very proud of, oh, Rick's pointing to something else. Sorry, Rick, uh, uh, Chris can see the questions better okay, than I can. Yes, yeah, yeah, there was just a question with regards to, cut. let's see here. Uh, can you show the column in the room as well for a short amount of time? Uh, just for just a touch base on that. And does well, that this, this column here? Yeah, there's a whole design thought that went behind here. So let me back you up. The original kitchen, this was a main wall. Now I can assure you, the decor center we added, for those who haven't been to our decor center, we added a fourth level. So there's some real structural issues here. The, one of the reasons we redesigned this kitchen for the third time um, was the issue that where you see this post here was the original kitchen. And if we've learned nothing in over 200 homes, over 27 years, the kitchen is the heart of the home. We physically needed more space. That is a structural post. That is a structural post. And I'll be frank, there was another structural post right here. So you can imagine what it did to the kitchen. It made the kitchen substantially smaller. 
one thing we're really excited about, and I'll get right back to this column here, is that was the dining room. From here over was the dining room where now the pantry and server lives. The dining room has technically been moved to the front of the house, and there's a lot of good design reasons as to why we've done that. But we also have the capability of the dining room functionality here for more informal eating when everything's said and done. But back to this column. So what we've done here is structurally we elected not to move that for cost reasons. We had all the HVAC, all the plumbing we had to move already, plus we had to resupport the house. But what we've done is we've turned this into a design element. So if you look very closely, there's a lot of custom millwork that's gone in here. We certainly haven't done the round column. And to tie it, we've carried the same design elements around the garden doors going to the outdoor living. So from a design perspective, it makes tremendous sense here. Obviously that piece of furniture won't be there. That's a safety issue right now. We've also dropped this down and there's a good reason to drop it down. This is designed as a very informal area. So when you're entertaining and you've got you know, nuts and bolts or appetizers and things of that nature, it's designed to have one more function, okay? This is a way of defining space without closing in space. If you'd done this, which most people would do at 36 inches, you would have closed visually the space. We wanted to define the space without closing it, and we didn't want a column by it there. So it's designed multiple purposes in mind. Now, typically you'll see a little half wall be just the four or five inches that a regular wall is. Typically our half walls, we do try to make them functional as Gord stated. So this one's almost a foot wide. So as Gord said, if there is ever a, 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 a social function here, you can actually place drinks or, or food here and it actually becomes now part of the entertainment uh, area and it gives you more counter service. So let me just wrap up. First of all, thank everybody for dialing in. Um, please feel free to share this with your friends, uh, with families. It's all about getting out the information. We are trying to give back. Uh, we're trying to actually show some of our design excellence. This is one moment where I will state that uh, we are part of the Build Society. We are the only a design build company in the province offering tour of homes. Uh, we have historically, and for some of our long-term clients, they can substantiate this. We've been opening up homes every single year for the last 27 years. Hopefully that shows the trust and the value that we've been giving to our client base. But I'll go one step further. Uh, two years ago, we were recognized by the Build Society and the Build Society gave us the classification of one of the three best design build companies in the province. And that was based on them interviewing our clients, them looking at our cost structures, looking at our design, and what we physically delivered to the industry. So we were exceptionally proud of it. Fast forward to this year, obviously the big uh, awards, it's, it's, our, it's our night. It's the red carpet night, basically, where we go to, and there's thousands of people there. John Tory's up on the stage presenting. Well, ironically, this year we got a home run. There are only seven awards that we can actually even qualify for as a custom design build company. We've seen companies take one and even two awards. Lifestyles by Barron's, and I couldn't be prouder of the team, actually took five of the seven awards. So exceptionally proud of that. Um, three of them, actually four of them, I believe we took, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, four of them we took the number one position, which meant the best in the province. And uh, just a recap, there was best uh, basement designs, best bathroom design, best design, uh, sorry, uh, renovation uh, addition is the fourth one. I'm missing the fourth one, Chris. Overall, Help me out. overall design. Oh, sorry. And best overall design. So if you think about it, in the province of Ontario, Lifestyles by Barons took the four top awards as the number one. And then we took two other awards where we were one of the three finalists. So pretty proud of that. If you'd like more details, and once again, that can't be purchased. That's from the Build Society. That was independently done. Uh, you can see that on our website. Please, I encourage you to share this with uh, friends and folks. Uh, it's all about information. Let me recap just what the next sessions are. So the next section we have, which we're really excited about, is right behind here, okay? And I can't be more excited about that. We've got probably one of the most interesting pantries and one of the most interesting surveys we've ever designed. We're always having to step it up. Super excited about that. The pantry survey in the sec next session has more capacity than the entire original kitchen. And folks that have been in here, i.e. in the industry, we've had some major people from the industry already in here, are just saying this is at a level they haven't seen before. So that's going to be the next session next Wednesday, so really excited. The third session after that is dealing with everything from uh, powder rooms, so very small bathrooms, to the main bath, to what we call the spa bath.
And by the way, we won the category in the spa bath this year as well. So that's the next session. So really excited about, that's the third session of. Uh, and then we have the fourth session. So the fourth session is gonna be dealing with feature walls. So we're gonna be talking about everything from uh, home theaters, um, to feature walls, to actual ceiling details. Uh, there's gonna be a number, Tito Monitor Room Design. Okay, it's all about feature walls in the fourth session. The fifth session I'm really excited about, the world has changed. And there's nobody on this bridge who doesn't realize the world has changed. There's a lot of fear out there right now. So what we're introducing at Lifestyles is we're trying to help more people out at the end of the day. We're gonna be introducing a very cost-effective solution to design. And we've already, uh, Rick leads that side of it. Uh, he's been reaching out to some of our manufacturers to see what sort of volume things we can pull so we can have very simplified packages that are a lot more cost effective. More details will follow on that. We haven't even launched that one at this point, but that will be our first launch and learn. Now, if there's people that are excited and want to know more applications, because there's so much to see at this decor center, feel free to book. We do have a challenge here, and it's a real challenge. If you think about it, in the past we used to have 60 people coming through on the hour it was thousands of people as we ran through the tour of home program. For safety reasons, first of all, for our employees and also for our clients, we're gonna restrict that. It's gonna be down to two. And we are gonna disinfect the entire decor center. So we know we're gonna get overwhelmed very quickly. So strong recommendation. If you have a real interest in the decor center, because there's a tremendous amount to see, feel free to book. Um, we will do our very best to accommodate. Um, or you can also feel free to book a consultation. This is where we will physically come out to your home. There's a whole disinfection process. And according to the health authorities, we're at that stage now where we have to start looking at starting to go back into production. So we're, we're trying to balance it, but we know there's going to be a, a volume issue. We're going to have trouble dealing with based on our new realities. So thank you very much. Rick, is there anything you would like to add as our sales VP? Chris, is there anything you'd like to add as our director? Uh, Chris, are there any other final questions? Yeah, so actually, I'm just going through right now. I'm just unmuting everyone. If uh, there are no more questions in the chat, thanks everyone for your comments as well. Uh, so as I'm just unmuting everybody, I'd like to let everyone know as well that I'll be sending a follow-up email. Uh, just, you know, this is our first crack at it, so we appreciate everyone joining up, and we'd love to hear your, fa your feedback. It means a lot to us, and I'll be sending that in a follow-up email. Rick, you had yeah, this little to... trick where you showed some other... Um, uh, There's a question there. Is there, sorry, somebody had a question? Chris? Nope, um, maybe, yeah, feel free if anyone has a question at this time to unmute and uh, ask away. If not, we'll close up. All right, um, Gordon, have you taped this for future use? Uh, yes, uh, it's taped tape for future use as well. And it's also for learnings for us as well. Yeah, it's like Yeah, great. Oh, thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we're excited to finally launch it. <laughs> this is not how we thought we'd be launching the Divorce Center. <laughs> you roll with the punches, right? Rick, is there anything uh, uh, now you'd like to add? No, I just want to thank everyone and um, let everyone stay safe. Um, hopefully, you know, everyone's got their fingers crossed that this will be uh, less time than more, but nobody knows at this point. So we'll keep doing these webinars. Yeah. Hoping that uh, we'll see all of you again. And as Gord said, we're really excited about the fifth that webinar and this new program that's going to uh, come up. So I'm hoping to see more of you. And actually, if you have any friends or family, please invite them. The more people on here, the more uh, the merrier. I, I can't encourage that enough because I'll be frank, we've had some pretty senior people in the industry in the decor center. And their response is, we've got this at a level that they've never seen, like as far as excellence of design and get it out to everybody because there really is some super creativity here. So I encourage you to share it with uh, friends and family. Well, Gord, Gord, yeah. Gord, Rick again. Um, you know, as I see this, uh, a thought that I had is that um, sometimes people could be overwhelmed and yeah. so impressed with the, uh, the, the workmanship yeah. and the design that they might be a little fearful. So if you could give them a little encouragement regarding the price point, the yeah. fact that it is competitive, I think that would be very, very helpful. So, Ricky, you mentioned a really good point here. Um, in the industry, one of the reasons we won the awards, quite frankly, is they do look at our cost structures, and we are well under industry. So, 
I'll be frank, and, and Rick, you, uh, for those who don't know Rick Giuliani uh, and Justine Giuliani, um, we actually, the first award we ever received was on their home, and it was them that were encouraging us to go to the Build Society. Mm -hmm. um, so when the Build Society drilled down and looked at our cost structures, we're well under industry from a standpoint of cost and value that we produce. And it's not because we're heroes. We, we try and do the right thing by all of our clients, but we do have a tremendous number of direct manufacturer relationships. There's not a thing that you see here that hasn't come from a direct manufacturer. So as an example, cabinetry is known normally go manufacturer, wholesaler, distributor, retailer, a lot of hands in the pocket. In our case, they go from our design team that Annette and uh, uh, Rick leads directly to us. So we are able to provide better price points. And one thing we're super excited about is we're trying to strip out a lot of the heavy duty complicated design aspects with a whole program that Rick, uh, our Rick is gonna be launching next month. Um, and we're really excited about it. It's gonna take the price levels down significantly. Now, it won't, we won't be doing all the structural changes. It's gonna be how do we get it beautiful without all of the structural changes, okay? And that will have a really positive impact on costing. So, Rick Giuliani. Although, although we still have the full custom build side also absolutely the custom build will always be a part of lifestyle so if you go back to the our 27 years we used to do a lot of simpler and simpler much simpler applications and we are more than happy to do that and you still get the same resources the same supply channels the same teams so it's still the lifestyle offering but not at that custom price point and once again our custom price points are well under industry even uh, as a as a baseline so, Rick Giuliani, uh, thank you for that comment. That was an excellent comment. Chris? Chris? Oh, that's all. We don't have any other questions on the chat at this time. Okay. Thank you, guys, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Look forward to seeing you folks and whoever else uh, on our next one next Wednesday. Thank you again. Thank uh, you all. Thank you. Thanks.